Welcome to the MIT Admissions website. We just finished celebrating the 150th anniversary of our founding, and it's been really fun for us to look back over the 150-year history of MIT. One of the things that we did was look back through the archives, and we found this video from about 20 years ago. The haircuts are a little bit dated, as are some of the statistics, but it's really striking at how consistent MIT has actually been through the years. We had a lot of fun watching this video, and we think you will too. Enjoy. I want you guys to make a video about MIT. I want it to give prospective students a taste of life here at the Institute. It should be intelligent, but fun, unfettered, yet disciplined, young, yet old, you know what I'm saying? Make it warm, make it human, make it creative, but make it good. when the alumni got a hold of that? It's MIT we're talking about. Feynman went here. I am paid. Keep your pants on. It was just a thought. This video is for students and parents. Parents who sign large tuition checks. But the admissions people said that 57% of the incoming class qualifies for financial aid. It's still expensive. All right, all right. We can't forget about the parents. So how about something like this? Welcome to MIT. The university that has produced 27 Nobel Prize winners, three of them in economics. What a coincidence, since I want to talk to you about what good economic sense it makes to send your little prodigy off to MIT. You see, at MIT, we like to think of an education not as an expenditure, but as an investment in the future. Theirs and yours. Whether their future happens to be in aerospace, engineering, computer science, or even the liberal arts, you can be sure your youngster will leave MIT fully prepared to run the world and make a pretty penny doing it. In fact, with an MIT diploma backing them up, people will tend to believe everything they say, even if they're wrong. Come on, Mom and Dad, how about it? But most importantly, you can rest assured that with their MIT diploma, they'll always make more than enough money to provide for your comfortable and secure retirement. And why not? After all, don't you deserve it? That would be fine. For a game show. Okay, so it was lame. At least it was true. Look, I think the only way to give people a sense of what MIT is really like is to talk to the people who deal with the place on a daily basis. You know, students and faculty. I agree, but we gotta ask the questions that incoming freshmen would have about the place. Such as? The, the first thing that comes to mind um, is how easy I thought it was the first two or three weeks. I guess it, that goes through every, every freshman's mind. They give you problem sets weekly, which is good because usually if you, you know, if you can do the problem set, then you're, you're pretty much set. So the first two or three weeks you say, this is MIT, this is how it is. And then after that, you, you just don't know, you know, how you could have thought that before. When I first came here, like, I thought like some of the problem sets were absolutely impossible, but people would show me how to do them and then be like, oh. Freshman year is based on a pass no credit grading system. Because people come from all over the country and having the pass fail thing kind of eases the stress and makes everyone a little bit more even, you know. A really large percentage of the people here get financial aid. 
financial aid based on need. It's not so much, I mean, it's a prestige school, but not a prestige school in the sense that some Ivy Leagues might be, you know, a, a big family name school or something like that. It's more uh, what your abilities were or your interest in learning. So you get people from all different backgrounds. I would say more, more middle classy. My parents can't give me even $200, let alone, you know, 2,000 or however many thousands. And even if you have to get a number of loans, it's always, the way I think of it is, the education is the best investment you can make. I didn't think I would have fun here, and I was looking to have at least some fun. I mean, I wanted a good education, of course. Math, science, math, science. Now that I'm here, I find that none of that's really true. There's a party every night if you, if you want to do that. The social life I've experienced is more small parties and small groups. I think it's really easy to join things, just in general. Other than, I guess, being a student, I'm, uh, I also run track. I was involved with the human-powered hydrofoil team since it was started about three years ago. Also, I've been um, coordinating recycling. Besides that, I also started a rock band with some friends of mine. I worked in the admissions office. I build robots that paint oil paintings. I'm in the Shakespeare Ensemble. A club called Ducha. Caribbean Club. On the basketball team. Musical Theater Guild. March on Washington. And there's Boston as well, which is a really neat city. At MIT, everyone here is smart and nobody cares. There's not the stigma as attached to it as it was in high school. And everybody puts it behind them that they're smart and they just go out and they do other stuff. I think that whole atmosphere and that whole feeling really contributes to the way you learn. I study my, I, I, I study very hard, I think, from study Sunday to Thursday, but I think that's a lifestyle that you accept when you come here. There's some extraordinarily bright people here. I mean, just extraordinarily bright. I really don't consider myself to be smart as much as I am, hardworking, you know. For smart people, things come pretty easy and to them. I don't think most of the stuff at MIT has come to me as easy as it has been through continuous banging against the wall until I get it right. It's not even smartness. I think it's persistence <laughs> or just deciding that you're not lame and that you can do it. I, I think that's it more than anything. I thought it was going to be geek central. The word nerd kind of was generally applied to the school. Math, science, math, science. Geek central. The word nerd. Wait, 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 wait. Stop right there. And that's a critical issue. It's time we settle this once and for all. What? It's time for a nerd hunt. Yo, all you homebrides out in Bronx, this one's for you. Pump up the volume, pump up the volume, pump up the volume. Wicked, wicked. Nerds? Try the physics lab. I saw one go that way. Try looking up the river at Harvard. <laughs> in the ventilation system over at the library. What do I get if I catch one for you? Does it have to be a live nerd? Uh, uh, uh. Hey, get out of here! Hey, give me a break! I don't think so. Hey, miss, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me. Sir? Sir? Excuse me, sir? Define nerd. Everybody looked pretty normal to me. Case closed. Next question. One of the things that people face when they come here is they're really afraid to say, I don't understand, I'm, you know, I'm lost, I need help. You know, because we're used to being at the top of our class, we're used to breezing through everything. 3 a.m. in the morning sometimes you'll come across and you've got two exams the next day, a couple problem sets, and all you can think of is, hmm, <laughs> this is not looking very good for me. And you need, you need to have a group of people that you can lean on and say, oh, help me get through this, you know. 
that's important advice to just calm down and don't be so hyped and ready to just, I got to do everything. Everything has to be done. Just relax and just get the hang of it. And then if you need help, just ask for help because there's a lot of help everywhere. You can always find a, an upperclassman that will, like, would rather do your homework and show you how to do it than do their own. I think it's more of like an ego trip to them to like actually demonstrate they know something. I mean, it's amazing the attention you get and the support you get. Actually, that's, that's probably what I would say. That one of the, the best things and the worst things about MIT is the intensity. It's very good and it can be bad if you, you're not careful about it. The people. Very outgoing, very helpful unconventional friendly people if you have any questions any problems you know do you want to see my Europe small little animal looks like a squirrel about half the size with stripes they eat a lot of green things a Europe stands for undergraduate research opportunities program it's it's pretty unique to MIT or if, if not, it, it's everything else is a coffee. <laughs> Basically, it's a chance for undergraduates to get involved in real research. It was a job, too, which is a good thing, you know. You have some security, get some pocket money. That really influenced me to want to go to graduate school. There are, there are lots of things that your opera can do. Like once, once uh, you talk to a professor and he design, decides to uh, hire you on as a Europe student. Uh, I ended up working on this shuttle experiment, which flew. And just this past fall, we set a world record with this boat. We went faster than anybody's ever gone on water under human power. This past summer I worked with Professor Vernon Ingram. I've had research projects uh, going now for some years to do with understanding Down syndrome. Because I felt it was something practical that would really make an impact on people's lives. Or to do with Alzheimer's disease. What you're doing may someday, you know, affect other people. I love teaching MIT students because they don't have the cliches that many students who go to um, other institutions have. I, I was told I had a bunch of really unruly kids. They're not afraid to tell me if they hate Don Quixote. Or it's a mental unruliness, which I think is nice. I mean, it's an unruliness that says we're here to learn and we want to know how you know these things. How do you find these things out? And I think that's terrific. That's the way students should be. I've had quite a few students, you know, who I've, I've met with regularly, you know, to talk. And not only about, you know, the obvious things like what course shall I take. No, 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 no. I'm not going to tell you about this. I'm going to tell you about something completely different. And he went on and he started telling us about stuff that had not been published. And it was like he was letting us in on this big secret that no one else knew. And it was something that, you know, I wouldn't have had a chance to find that out if I had been going to some other university. I think that students who come here should be willing to let their passions fly. This is a place that's very conducive to taking these passions, these dreams, and molding them into reality. I think that if you're willing to let that happen, to let that sense of release then a lot of neat things can happen to you here. I think that was pretty good. It was informative. It had heart. It was inspiring, but I still feel like the video is missing something. What? A big ending. You know, something that ties the whole thing up. What? Like a production number? A, a car chase? What are you saying? No, you know what I'm after. No, long shots of the cafeteria. Oh, what? Squirrels? No. In the springtime? Yes. The, the crew team practicing Just finished it. Charles, please. I hate it. Frisbee? What you, you guys are fired. Hey! No, hey! You know, you hey! Like you... you can't stop the video yet. You haven't told them about how in the last five years MIT has had 66 All-American athletes, male and female, in 16 different sports. Three Hall of Fame scholar athletes in the National Football Foundation. Wait! You haven't said anything about the hackers at MIT. That illustriously inventive and fearless group of renegades whose battle cry is, FURTHER! We're responsible for classic hacks like putting a phone booth atop the Great Dome and the balloon prank which disrupted the Harvard-Yale game. We have that one on tape, of course. But did you tell them that MIT grads have gone on to law school, medical school, business school, and hold some of the highest positions hey, in their respective fields? wrong tape! Don't touch that. Who are you? John Hammond, class of 84. 
Did you tell him about the guys, diversity of cultural backgrounds in the student body? I just finished it. Or I love it. You guys are geniuses. Like Phenomenal. That's it. Really, I'm primo stuff. A number one, excellente. And I'm being sincere with you. All right, this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> so, I'm not Someone in this room you. has to come to MIT, study video, and write a decent ending for this thing. So this is take one. MIT just uh, finished founding. Um, <laughs> oh, that was too bad because that was good. <laughs> MIT just celebrated. It's uh, blah blah. All right. Luckily, it's not long. Can I just just keep yeah. going? You can yeah, cut all yeah, this yeah, stuff.